Hello and welcome to my 17 C++ tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to cover one important thing called inheritance. That's one of the most important concepts in C++. It means that a certain class can inherit the others class methods and variables. You need to learn a few simple rules before working with that. Imagine this, in real life you know things that your parents know, mostly, but you don't know all their private stuff. It's similar with classes. When you create a child class that inherits a parent class, child inherits some functions and variables, not all of them. So let's see this in an example. We're going to create a class called parent. That class will have a private section. The private section will have a variable s and it will have a function that will print that variable. It will also have a public section and in that section we're we are going to have a variable p and we're going to have a function for printing that variable p. Also we are going to make a constructor that will initialize the parent class. So the parent will set the var s to for example 5 and var p to mm, 10. Okay, we made that. When we create an object from our parent class, we can print the variable p because the s function s is not accessible because it's in a private section. It would be only accessible from the functions here. We could print it via the constructor or something like that or other functions here but we don't need this in this tutorial. Um, let's set a breakpoint here. A lot of users complain about uh, system commands and they're right. Uh, they shouldn't be used because they're not cross-platform. So let's set the breakpoint and start a program. Oh, we have an error. Yes. Uh, if you get an error like this, unresolved externals and linker errors, it probably means that you didn't implement all the functions. And that's the case here. We didn't specify the body of print for s and print for p. So we need to code those functions first. Let's do it. With parent and print for p. And we are going to just make a simple C out. So P is going to be equal war P and an end line. I'm going to repeat that for war S, but I'm not going to type that. So it will be like this. We run the program. As you can see, it says P is equal to 10, as it, it's supposed to do like that. You see, we set it to 10, it equals 10. Now for the child function, or the child class, sorry. So for the child class, we need to create a simple class called child. But notice this. We make it public parent. And what this means? This means that our child class will inherit the functions and variables from the parent class. So it will have all the public and protected sections. We didn't create a protected section here, but um, it's uh, one important section that I will cover a little bit later. So public, everything from the public section is now copied to child class. So we have the warp p, we have this function. Also the constructor will set by default the the first constructor called is the parents constructor and then we they call the child construction constructor. 
So if you... You can also define other functions here. You don't need... You're, go you're going to have all these plus your own. So we can, for example, set... Uh, create a function that will set the war p to another value. So set p, for example, and let's say a. I'm gonna set it like this. So we can say war p is equal to a. And semicolon missing. Okay. Uh, so let's make a child. Child c. And the C can print the variable again. So um, when we continue from this breakpoint, let's step over. So we created now a C object. It's a child object from the child class. And then we go to the next command we see that it showed wa uh, value 10 from the variable p. So in, it inherited this function and now the child contains also that function. In another example, let's set the p and let's set it to for example 30 and after that we're going to print it again and we're also going to print the parent variable so let's put the breakpoint here and the breakpoint here as you can see the first two print 10 now we go we set the variable to set the p variable to 30 and the public variable and after that we're going to print it as you can see it's now 30 the child has a value of 30 in its war p and when we step over again to print the parents variable you can see that it's, it's 10. So, as you can see, the child, f the child class and the parent class are now not related. All from the public is copy copied to the child and now it contains all the, those methods and variables, but they're independent. They're different from the parent. So, they can be modified in a different way, they can be accessed a different way and you don't need to worry about that. So that's basically something in short about um, inheritance. There's a lot of other things that you should also work on before uh, diving deep in C++ and we're going to cover more inheritance in the future projects and tutorials but one more thing that I need to explain to you is the protected section so let's make a protected section here protected uh, this section is um, similar to the private section it can be accessed from within our parent class from functions in the parent class but it can't be accessed from the public but the child will inherit the protected section that's the main important thing that you need to know so we can have a variable x there and we can also have a function for example print x and let's say we have set x. It's gonna have an x. It's gonna set variable x. It's gonna be x. And we're gonna make this function also here so we don't increase the size so you can see everything. Okay. 
sorry. It should be like this. Okay, we now made it. So now, when a child tries to print the X, it can because it's now in its protected section. So, for example, from the set P, we can also call set X function. As you can see, notice the little star here. It represented its inherited. So we can set to A and we can also print X. So after this line, you're gonna set it to the same value, in this example to 30, and print the X immediately. So as you can see, it's 10, 10. We step and finish that function. It's now 30, X is set to the 30 and print. So we set the X 30, variable A, and then we print it. As you can see, it prints it correctly. And we can also see the other ones. It's 30, it's 10. So that's about it in this tutorial. We covered the bare basics of inheritance in C++. When we learn some more concepts that are important, we are going to do more stuff with this. This table is very important for you to understand inheritance totally. So let's look at the table. Access to the base class. This is our parent class. Let's look at below. The base class, the parent class. It has a private, protected and public section. In these sections I made variables. Int A is private variable, int B is protected variable and int C is public variable. Let's look above. If we create, uh, if we inherit a child class to be privately inherited or privately derived, that's the correct uh, expression, privately derived, as you can see, um, as you can see the private keyword. What will happen? Let's look at the table. The private stuff from the base class won't be accessible. The protected stuff from the base class will be private in the derived one. The public stuff from the base class will be private. So let's look. Uh, let's say we have private section here. Private section. Nah, it's a little bit hard to draw with the mouse. Uh, the private section. So, the protected will be private. The public will be private. So it will be here in the private section. Private, private, as you can see from the table. So this will not be possible as A is not inherited. The B will be, however, possible because it's in a private section, we can access it from within the class, everything is okay. We can access also the C, it's also in the private section. From the code, we can call the function, we can print them, but we cannot set the B or A, A because it's not inherited, B because we cannot access the private section from outside, uh, outside the class, and C also because it's in private. The same thing is from the protected, just the protected, the private is not uh, inherited, so this is not possible. Also, um, the protected from the base class is in the protected. Let's say we have a protected. Uh, in the protected uh, section and the public 
is also in the protected section. So this is um, okay and we can print the B and print the C. Also this is not good because it's not inherited at all. Um, we cannot set this because it's uh, protected. Uh, protected X like private. It's only it only can be accessed from within the class or from the inherited class. And the C also cannot be accessed because it's protected. But in the public, publicly derived, so check the public keyword, um, the protected part, so in B, is in the respective protected area. Protected section. They should have a protected section. As you can see from the table. Private is not accessible. Protected is protected and public is public. So it's same here. Protected goes from the protected to protected. The public goes to the public. And this is not possible because it's not inherited. Uh, the B is possible. It's in the protected zone. We can print it. The, we can print also the C because it's a public zone. Here in the code, this is not possible. This is also not possible because B is protected. And this is possible. We can do this. So it's, it's okay. We can set the C to 10 because it's public. And I hope this table above will help you a lot with your code. Um, it's very useful to have it by hand in the beginning, but you will learn this. It's not complicated. Uh, also, if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments or contact me via message. I will try to answer them. And thanks again for watching and please subscribe. See you in the next tutorial.